Dean Linke here with John Walsh. Chris Doran here with Dean Linke. Little jet ski action out here on Lake Michigan as we get ready to bring you Big Ten men's soccer. The pep band here as well, Northwestern and Maryland. Dean Linky along with Chris Dorn. Let's take a look at the starting lineup and formation for Sasho Sorosky now in his 24th season, eight college cups. Dan Metzger with a couple of goals, but he's really the engine in the midfield. And Sasho Sorosky says he's the rock in the midfield. So he's got to make sure everyone stays connected defensively, but Maryland pushes forward too. They're missing Patrick Mullins, 19 goals from a year ago. Let's take a look here at the Northwestern starting lineup. 14 great years for Tim Lenahan, a 4-2-3-1. Well, Dean, we've talked about Joey Calistri, his late season heroics over the last couple of years, looking for that to get turned on this afternoon against Maryland. In goal for Maryland, Zach Steffen. He was warming up and he may have hurt himself a little bit. His right arm extends, hits the turf here at Lakeside Field. After he gets up, noticeably a little moved by the contact with the turf and the ball at the same time. Couldn't identify whether it was a finger or a wrist, but he worked through that over the course of warmups. Played in the U-17 World Cup, part of the U-20 player pool as well, and adds to the amazing list of goalkeepers here in Big Ten play. Thanks for joining us here from Evanston, and you will definitely see the wind playing a factor. It always does here at Lakeside Field. The Wildcats in white from head to toe. Maryland in all black, and it's Maryland's first appearance as a Big Ten team here to Evanston, Illinois. So exciting to have Sasso Sorosky and the Terps in the Big Ten. As they play it back to Stefan, we'll keep an eye on them. Of course, Maryland won the national championship in 2008 and 2005. They have had eight appearances in the College Cup, and they lost in the final a year ago to Notre Dame. The accomplishments for Sasho Sorosky is simply amazing at Maryland. And because of that, he recruits tremendous players. He's got three starting freshmen out there today. We talked about some of the late changes that he had to make even when he arrived here with the squad at Lakeside Field because of injuries and some guys not feeling 100%. He's also got sophomores in here that have college cup experience. You talk about the, the veteran leadership of a senior in the midfield like Danny Metzger, sophomores in the back, guys who've got college cup experience and some freshmen stepping on who have aspirations of playing professionally. That's a nice mix of players. No doubt about it, but they have had trouble scoring goals this year. Patrick Mullins had 19 goals and 10 assists last year. Shilo Shuma added six goals, and he's now with Portland. And there's a look at Sasso Sorosky. Since 1998, every class that he's recruited has gone to at least one college cup. How about that for a little recruiting tip? I'll tell you what, it's unbelievable. Looking at his entire resume, when he began collegiate coaching, he only has missed the tournament twice. You're talking about almost two decades of getting to the NCAA tournament. Incredible, and he is excited about the Big Ten because he's got a lot of Midwest ties to the Milwaukee area. His brother went to Michigan State. And here comes the Wildcats. They'll get it out wide on the left side. Love playing on the turf here. Headed out of there by Maryland. Still back. Stefan got a piece of it. Looked like it went across, and it did. And the Wildcats have scored. Just a couple minutes in, they lead it 1-0. Well, let's talk about the step over on the outside. Unbelievable work by Northwestern getting to the goal line and then looking for targets up top. Service in, Henry Harrell's on the back post looking for the opportunity, he shoots. Who has to drop to his right side? But Zach Seffin, the goalkeeper, I don't know if it's already across the line at that point or if this ends up being an old goal. That's a great strike by Harrell. It's and cross. It looks like it's almost an own goal with Kalisri getting involved. Yeah, I think it crossed actually as Steffen was going for it. I'm gonna guess they're gonna give the goal to Harrell. They are. And Henry Harrell wearing number 14. Wasn't even sure if he was gonna start as he's been battling injuries all season long. And nothing to make you feel a little bit better than putting one in the back of the net, Chris Doran. Not sure that what Zach Steffen dealt with in the pregame during warmups, hurting his right wrist or fingers. 
impacted how he was able to be effective in that play, but it certainly was served to the hand that appeared to be injured during warm-ups. Great point, Chris Doran, is normally that would be a ball that the big Stefan would parry away, but it kind of went through his hand and over the goal line, and the Wildcats now on top, one to nothing. First goal of the 2014 campaign for Harrell. Stefan is still holding that right hand, and Sasha Shirovsky is going to have to consider whether or not his starting goalkeeper needs to be pulled out. On the flip side, give New Northwestern all sorts of credit. They come out of the box. They put their imprint on this game from the get-go, getting to the goal line within seconds of the kickoff. Harold does a terrific job, and that ball does go across. You're right. On the replay, I thought it had perhaps popped out, but on that angle, absolutely across the goal line. Give Harold the goal. Well, if Stefan can't go, and obviously they need to keep an eye on him, number 21, Jordan Tatum, the senior from Manassas, Virginia, went to Osborne High School, would be the player that would come on. Keep in mind, Stefan has played every minute since arriving in College Park, so Mr. Tatum could be a little rusty. Here comes Kalistri, trying to stay with it. Tim Lenahan waiting for him to explode as the first two seasons for Kalistri have been magical. 12 goals and four assists, all Big Ten campaign a year ago. He had nine goals and two assists, winning the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. And with sitting on three, Tim Lenahan ready for him to get going. Coach Lenahan actually predicted that this would be the weekend that that gets started. He's going up, a couple of, up against a couple of very strong central defenders for Maryland, more on those guys coming up. Maryland to Carbajal. Here comes Ambrose, he's pushed off the ground. All right, Chris Dorn, here's the deal. Maryland, we talked about their success, eight college cups, every class getting to the college cup, two national championships, and they normally just reload, but the loss of Patrick Mullins, 19 goals last year, 17 goals his junior year, 10 assists both seasons, that's hard to replace. Well, this is a guy certainly who gets forward but doesn't have that kind of goal count, and the chemistry of front runners is important. Sasha Shirovsky has not yet found that. Corbol's on the free kick. Flicked over the head of Tyler Miller. Chris will go in goal with Tyler Miller, the all-time shutouts leader here at Northwestern, passing Misha Rosenthal. Corbos does a nice job of finding his target inside. Shooting from distance is a favorite of Cabros, but he typically is doing that in the run of play. A couple years ago, we were here at Lakeside Field for the Big Ten Tournament when Michigan State met Michigan in the final, and it really was, as it went to overtime, it was about winning the coin toss to get the win. That's how much the win plays a role. If you're able to get the win, you could win the game. Michigan State did it, and I say that because you can feel the wind picking up here now. Here's Nico Boxel. Did not play in that 2 0 loss to Ohio State, sitting out with cards. And an uncharacteristic giveaway by Nico Boxel, but he gets bailed out from his teammates. Nico's brother Michael starred for UCSB. Now playing professionally in Phoenix. Dog Jeffrey Hobson, 19, in the middle of that a moment ago. It'll be a throw in for Ambrose and Maryland. They are down 1 0 on the road. Everybody looking up at the Penn State Nittany Lions. They are now 4 0 0 as Connor Maloney with another goal last night to beat Rutgers. And the Terps inside the 18. Penn State is six clear of the Ohio State Buckeyes who beat Michigan State three to two yesterday. And Michigan knocked off Wisconsin two to one in overtime. So 
Penn State starting to run away with it. What we're seeing now, Dean, is a little more of the rhythm I talked about in pregame. The possession that Maryland enjoys using the diamond in the midfield. They start to work the ball, recycle it through the back, work it through the middle. The flank players get forward. Ambrose, left back, likes to push forward, marked by Harrell. Here's Holloway, he steps up. Holloway had to move to the center back in that Ohio State game with Boxo out. He's a lot more comfortable in that holding mid. There's Medina, great touch and save. Medina back to Holloway, and then Medina fouled. Northwestern will stay with it. Medina trying to get back from ACL surgery last year. Excellent over the ball on restarts in particular. Real strong with his left foot. The chop from the back of the whistle. Rosenberg booms it long for Kalistri. And that'll catch a little bit of the wind and roll out of bounds. And here's Zach Steffen again. We'll keep an eye on that Steffen story. Capturing him in warm-ups, injuring that right hand. You see Zach Steffen's numbers there. One of the better goalkeepers, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. But Big Ten loaded with great goalkeepers. Last week we saw Andrew Wolverton become the all-time shutouts leader for Penn State. This conference is complete with tremendous goalkeeping talent. For a sophomore, Stefan has got quite a bit on his resume already. You mentioned the call-ups to the U-20s, was a member of the U-17 national team in the World Cup last year. Even though Maryland didn't win the national championship, he was voted the tournament's most valuable defensive player. Maryland starting to put some possession together. Good little chip there by Michael Sowers. He has two goals on the season, and Sauer, Sowers a player that is getting more time now for Sasha Swarovski. Towers was used as a back last year. Gets the step up into midfield. A little more involved in the buildup for Maryland. Metzger checks back. And Metzger, a player that Chris Doran spotlighted as we broke through the lineups. What he does is, as that holding midfielder, is he checks back as the wing backs get forward, and he helps out the two central backs in penetrating passes up the middle, and he can turn and distribute left or right. Through ball trying to find Sowers. He'll roll out of bounds, and Miller will take his time. Northwestern with an early goal from Henry Harrell. We didn't even know if he was gonna play, let alone start. He gets the start, and the Red-headed wonder boy with the big goal for the Wildcats. Harrell's tremendous, and as you mentioned, not sure if he was the one who was going to go. Sam Forsgren actually had worked his way into the potential starting 11 this afternoon. Coach Lenahan intermingles some of his midfielders. Harrell has proven his worth today so far. There's the Bulldog, hops in, drops it to Medina. Looking to get it wide, into the 18, back across, Kalistri's there, and it's 2 nothing Wildcats! Well, it's certainly not a warm welcome for the Terrapins to Lakeside Field this afternoon. What great buildup for Medina coming through the midfield and he scouts his opportunity forward. The pass into Kalistri is perfect. And on a finishing foot catches Zach Steffen at the near post. Cole Missimo with the service inside. Missimo involved in both services for the goals that Northwestern enjoys so far this afternoon. Put the ball on Harold's foot, puts the ball on Kalistri's foot. Well said, Co Missimo. That combination up top with Joey Kalistri 
It's worth pointing out that Tim Lenahan wasn't just talking solely about Kalee Street, but also about Missy Moe, and both of them delivering just as Tim Lenahan said they would. And I think, Chris, as Tim Lenahan was telling you that, you also felt it would happen today. Well, one of the keys to the contest is that we find Northwestern offering midfield support to the attacking players. And Joey Calistri is a guy who can certainly carry a lot of weight on his shoulders, but he needs that supporting help, in particular from the flank midfielders, the way Northwestern plays. Maryland comes in with a 1-1-1 one, one, and one record in Big Ten play. Their overall record coming in, 3-4-2. and two. Now, they had a similar record last year, and what they do, they made it to the final of the College Cup before losing to Notre Dame, so certainly any Sasso Swarovski team can recover, but it's a different kind of team. A lot of young players, and it's really about trying to find the right combinations. You're right, two pieces to this puzzle for Sasha Swarovski. Number one, can't find strike partners that are consistent up top. And if you don't have that chemistry established, then you're not gonna be able to establish attacking rhythm through the midfield too. The second piece that's really not working well is in this system of play, you leave yourself exposed in the back. And when you're exposed in the back, if you're not getting 100% help from your midfielders, in transition to defense, you leave yourself vulnerable. And that's what we've seen so far here. Maryland's actually suffered three shutout losses this season for the first time since dropping six games via shutout in 2009. Now both these teams, wouldn't you agree, Dean, are trying to come out of a bit of a shell that they're enduring right now in the Big Ten season. And Northwestern has answered that bell for sure. Two goals early. Chris, I love that you pointed out Missimo, but also the Bulldog Hobson got involved, made a big tackle to start the attack. That's that pressure in the midfield. And the chances created off of errors or, or your clear effort at winning a ball. You see Jeremy Raley on the outside. He's working the overlap there, not able to connect. Rayleigh's on the other side, Ambrose on the near side. These are the guys who've got to get forward for Maryland as they build an attack. They try to switch it to Ambrose. Harold puts some high pressure. Danka, get it out wide. Suli Danka, rather, number 22. Play it in the middle, back to Metzger. Danka. The center backs for Maryland are not big in stature, but they are super athletic. Played quite a bit as freshman a year ago. And once in a while, you'll see Alex Cronali get in there. He's six foot four giant, but Sasho prefers the athleticism of these two players right here, Doi Atchum and Danka. Maryland, better turn. Terps, for the moment, won that second ball, but now it'll go out of bounds and back to the Wildcats, up 2-0. Just popping in, Henry Harrell scored just a couple minutes in, and then Joey Calistri able to pad his stats as well, putting in his fourth goal of the campaign. Armin. Foster Corbos. Corbos. He'll drop it here now to Sowers. Sowers with the left foot. Come off of Northwestern. This is the second goal. Medina does a really nice job of dropping that ball in the crease between the defenders for Misimo. Misimo does a nice job of laying it into Calistri with such poise over the ball. First touch, plants it and beats the, keep, the keeper. For sure, assists will go to both Medina and Misimo. Perfect passes. Speaking of Kalistri, he's got Medina making a run down the middle of the field. He saw a whole bunch of black jerseys, so he cuts back and then is fouled. Boy, that is quality play right there. Looked up, nobody open, cut back in. Suli Danka does a nice job of keeping the pressure and forcing Kalistri to dribble east-west, which is almost enough. But then Kalistri invites the contact. Watch how he forces inside. Stay with him, Danka. Danka stays with him and then invites the contact, not even necessary. At that point, defensively, he's done a very nice job of keeping the attacking player within reach.
Throw in far side for Northwestern. See Lake Michigan, not even 20 yards from where he's throwing the ball in over there on the far side. A beautiful setting here, but the wind will play a factor. Let's see if Maryland can counter. They'll get some black jerseys going forward, and there is Hobson coming back again. That combination of Hobson and Holloway, so strong for Tim Lenahan's four in the back, two in the middle. And Hobson will win it again. Dropped here to Calistri. And Missimo is having himself a game. Subs coming in here now for Maryland. Not just yet, but Sasso Swarovski trying to go to this bench. Get to go to his bench before the opening whistle, unfortunately. Had depended on having George Campbell and Eric Carbajal running up top together. These two guys have trained together for two weeks, but unfortunately some personnel changes necessary. Campbell not able to go today. Mifout is in, and Mifout is a nice big six foot four target. He matches up well with the back line for Northwestern, but again, one of those true freshmen, a guy who's got some good experience. Now he's on the ball. Fout from the Netherlands. Not able to get around Northwestern's Nathan Durth, who has started to really gain some chemistry now in the back with the talented Nico Boxel. Fout has uh, trained as a youngster, trained with PSV Eindhoven, and comes over to Maryland to pursue his academics as well as a college soccer career. Big time target on restarts, but Maryland at this point hasn't had much in the way of opportunity to expose that height. Played into space to Harrell. He got the goal scoring started for the Wildcats as he'll drop it to Wilson. Wilson doesn't make a lot of runs up that right side. He's trying to get paid off. Mifout gets his head on it. Flicking it cleanly there to Kabelik, who's off the bench now for Sasso Sarosky. And he likes bringing Kabelik off the bench, the junior from Hungary. Adoy Atsum will get it wide to Rayleigh. Now keep in mind, Rayleigh actually, you mentioned him going forward. He actually started at forward against Michigan State in Maryland's home opener in the Big Ten, a 1 0 win for Damon Rensing, Michigan State Spartans in front of a brilliant crowd. It always is at Maryland. Very nice crowd here today as well on Alumni Weekend, celebrating some great success under Tim Lenahan, including a big win over Indiana in 2004, breaking their losing streak in the Big Ten and ending Indiana's remarkable winning streak. And really, Tim Lenahan says that sort of changed the landscape of Big Ten men's soccer after they beat Indiana. It did. All of a sudden, there weren't as many favorites in the conference when it came to the conference schedule anyway. And the sharing of titles among several teams was rather bountiful. Yeah, it used to always be Indiana. Michigan State got in there. Penn State, of course. The Buckeyes won a couple titles. Michigan won a Big Ten tournament. Ambrose heads it middle of the field. Medina is hoping to head it into space to Calistri. Good pressure from Maryland. Great pressure. They'll win it back. They'll square it. Good squared ball. Referee will let him play on as Maryland's on it. Several step overs. Now they'll get it wide, and after all those stepovers there by Corbos, he really had nothing else to do with it. And Cole Misimo is the guy who's tracking back defensively and helping Connor Holloway and company. With a player who's going to take a knee. We get a break in the action. Definitely a foul over there, I do believe. as going down for Maryland was Kabelik. He was fouled as he squared that ball back into the middle of the field, but they played advantage, and Maryland not really able to do anything. Let's take a look at the foul when Kabelik went down. Here's Misimo tracking back. And 
if it's his right knee, it may have been contact that Misimo made with him. If it's his left ankle, it may have been on the fall. Well, that's the last thing right now, is it has been a mash unit this season for Sasho Swarovski, which has not made it any easier trying to figure out what partnerships to go with as Sasho's front runners have been banged up all season long. It is absolutely the prettiest field, I think, in the Big Ten Conference, Lakeside Field, with a view like this. But when we get to the end of October and early November on this field, things change drastically, don't they? Oh, we, we did a game here a couple years ago with Ohio State where Weberman crossed midfield, hit it in the air, it bounced one time and went in the back of the net. Unbelievable with the wind influencing the play. And it is certainly home field advantage for the Northwestern Wildcats. But today we have a beautiful day with the light breeze coming out of the southwest. So for the most part, Maryland's got this breeze at their backs, but it's not much. I think for the most part, and, and Sasha Shirovsky told us that uh, Maryland plays Boston College on a turf field during the season. So the, the guys know the turf but I still think it takes a little bit to get used to it. Uh, even the pro players have an adjustment period. And at this point, Maryland has enjoyed, I think, a little more of the possession in the last 15, uh, maybe 10 minutes. They're starting to string some passes together, a little more comfort with what they're up against. Off of Maryland, throw in Northwestern. Missimo over. Thought about leaving it for Rosenberg, but Rosenberg says you go ahead and take it. Things change a little bit when you're up 2-0. And once again, out of bounds off of Maryland. Northwestern with two shots. They have made each one of them count. Leastry trying to earn a corner kick, and he does. Corner kick for the Wildcats. <laughs> Alumni weekend here in Evanston. Big weekend of activities under Tim Lenahan, who has truly made it a family since coming over from Lafayette. Corner kick. Stefan with little trouble there. Defending in his own man-to-man, -man, the big sophomore goalkeeper. Commanding presence, he looks so much bigger than six foot two. His counterpart, Tyler Miller, at 6'4". We talked about goalkeepers in this conference and how many great ones there are. Sowers checks back. Mikey Ambrose wearing the captain's armband. Now Sowers. Played in front. Meef out, had it for a moment. Dearth will clean it up. And it was Metzger who won it back for Maryland. Meef out, top of the 18 with Holloway on him. They drop it to the right side. Maryland can get it inside, perhaps even the six. It's right there, snapped across by Sowers. Looks like it may have been a handball. They'll point to the spot. Penalty kick, Maryland. Well, the referee, Cesar Ibarra, was right on the play. He gets a little bit of protest from the Wildcat players, but here's the service from the outside. And the handball is there. Off his arm. It's a, reason, it's a reasonable call. I think that's Grant Wilson. Wilson's arm was coming out off of his chest. So Carboles will try to pull one back here in the first half. Such an important opportunity here now for Maryland. And when you're Having trouble scoring goals, they're all important. From the penalty kick spot, Corboles trying to beat Miller, and he does, and it's 2-1 Maryland on the scoreboard. This is how it, this is how it happened, the head ball, and 
Grant Wilson with the elbow out and extended away from his chest. That is a reasonable whistle. The penalty kick by Corbeau's, his second goal of the 2014 campaign. Nice work, beating Tyler Miller. Corbeau's just went right down the middle. No doubt where he was going. Miller going to his right. Corbeau's straight down the middle where Miller was. And now it's two to one and a great opportunity for Maryland on the road to gain some confidence despite all the heartache of the injuries coming into this game and even during warm-ups as several changes in the starting lineup and of course we've also documented the Stefan situation although he seems to be okay now the things a goal like that does is it gives you confidence at least going into the locker room if not for these last few minutes of the half that ball played wide trying to find the freshman Armin who was involved in that last opportunity he served the ball in before the handball and the freshman who was a late addition to the starting lineup snaps it right there Maryland has also gone to the bench Emmanuel Corval the redshirt freshman and there's Corval he started some games he's gone to the bench has not seen a lot of time after Sasha was leaning on him early in the season but now really has to go to him with more injuries. And I don't blame Sasho for doing that. Now give Maryland the advantage on restarts with the size that's in there. Corner kick, Terps looking for the equalizer back across. Pretty good corner. Doy Atson will play it back to Stefan. First 15 minutes, it was the team in white and purple, but make no mistake, the last eight to 10 minutes, Maryland has held the majority of the play. Metzger over the top. Trying to find Meefout. He'll run it down. Holloway will clean it up for Northwestern. Rosenberg's clearance, one back by Maryland. Corbowles, who just scored the penalty kick, kept that alive. Dropped over to Corval. And looked like they wanted another handball. Look at the confidence Maryland's playing with right now. They're back in this game. Yeah, you can tell the alumni here are starting to get a little restless. They were feeling it. They were thinking about heading back to that tailgate a little early, but now they're settling in, Chris. Northwestern came out and punched Maryland in the mouth, as the saying goes, and, and Maryland had to lick their wounds just a bit. They're starting to find a little bit of rhythm. They didn't have a lot of rhythm in their midweek game against Georgetown. Georgetown, as Sasha Shirovsky told us, and, and Todd Yeagley of Indiana and so many other coaches who have played Georgetown, they're all saying that Georgetown this year is a Final Four team. Their size, their experience, the way they come at you. There wasn't much rhythm in that game for Maryland. They had gaps of it, but not a lot in the way of consistency. They're starting to find a little bit of that here this afternoon against Northwestern. Let's see if this was another handball, Chris. Ball popped up and on the volley. Oh my. It's a bit out of view, but you could surmise that Hobson had his hand away from his hip and it was another handball, no whistle. Make no mistake, the ball went through his arm as you saw his arm get checked back. What a great shot here by our crew here for the Big Ten Network. Certainly can see why there were some arms in the air on that opportunity, but no whistle that time. Pretty tough for a referee to make those two handball calls that closely together. Cesar Ibarra running the show in the middle. Two to one, Northwestern on top of Maryland. Everybody trying to track down Bob Warming and Penn State. They're four and oh with 12 points. Ohio State in second with six.
BTN goes where you want, when you want it, with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live soccer on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. BTN to go is now available to all major subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or participating video providers. To learn more, visit btntogo.com and also available in the App Store and on Google Play. Tyler Miller getting set to put this ball into play. He's wearing a red penny, a scrimmage vest, because he showed up with his black goalkeeper kit, which is in direct contrast with the Maryland kit. Interestingly, Tyler Miller's number is five. Of course, his real number, his uniform number is one as the goalkeeper, but he's wearing the vest for number five out there. It's tough, Chris. Flag stays down. Me fout. Gaining some confidence, a back heel. He was hoping that Armin was ready for it, but it was read by Northwestern as Northwestern starting to bunker just a little bit. I think this is the very first Big Ten matchup between two teams that are uniformed by Under Armour. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> Cleared out by Maryland. Boxel. Boxo hits that one long for sure. Boxo will be on many of the coaches' lists as a player that could make the all Big Ten team. Just a solid center back for Northwestern. And I told Tim Lenahan, I said, he looks like he's put on 20 pounds of muscle since the last time I saw him. And, and Coach Lenahan said, actually, he's trimmed down and it's all muscle. And he's a guy who is preparing for uh, post graduation after Northwestern and could very well be headed to the pros. Certainly has all the talent and the, and the gifts needed to go to the next level and has been uh, the rock in the back for Tim Lenahan's Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah, Tim Lenahan was so funny as we'll run out this play as he talked about the differences between Northwestern and Maryland. That one will head down near the end line. Sowers will get there. He'll cross it just as he's banged and it'll go out of bounds. Maryland could tie it here. Falls to Sowers. Great cutback. Stays with it. He slipped on the surface, though, and not able to get any mustard behind it. It'll go right to Miller. Really nifty combination play on the far side. Sowers demands so much of his teammates, doing a great job of cheating inside. And in that second layer of attack, here's the combination play. Look how confident Maryland is as they work their way into the box. LaFout's there just directing traffic. And Sowers with the opportunity, not quick enough on the trigger. Good defensive work by Northwestern to clog the central part of the box. I love that you pointed out Mifout, though, as this game has rolled on here in the first half. His confidence has picked up, and he's made some good passes and been solid with his back to goal as well. Here's Metzger. When in doubt, give it to number seven. Well, Dewey adds him. Looking for me foul. Holloway, he did get the handball. It'll be a free kick opportunity in the defensive third of the Wildcats. Chris Doran, your thoughts first on the home team. I love the way Northwestern came out, got things started very quickly. Good combination play in the final third and an opportunity to finish against a very good goalkeeper and a decent defense in Maryland, a team that's only given up eight goals this season. 
And then the recovery of Maryland. Oh, Maryland's done a nice job. You know, they they really needed some time to find some possession, and I think they, this team grows more comfortable as they keep the ball. The one thing that I'm, I, I think is missing is that clear opportunity, uh, like we just saw moments ago, the combination play from the sideline working their way in. We've got to see that on Sauer's side as well. Part of that is going to come from the involvement of the outside backs. Ambrose right now and Rainey are really tied into defending the outside midfielders for Northwestern. They're not getting forward quite as much. Well, adding to that breakdown, I love the substitution coming from Tim Lanahan as Eric Weberman, the senior. We've seen him score some big goals. Also, Riley Kelleher has checked in. There's Tim Lenahan. What an amazing job he has done, winning the double back in 2011 for the Northwestern Wildcats, his 14th season. And who would have thunk it? Eight NCAA appearances in the last 10 years at Northwestern, a place that couldn't even win a Big Ten game for years. Certainly was. Uh, you, you and I were around long enough, have been around long enough to remember those days when Northwestern was sort of the laughing stock of the schedule. And then all of a sudden, things started to change. The conference gets together, the tournament gets gets happening, and it, and this becomes what so many of the coaches have said is likely the premier conference in the in the country when it comes to college soccer. Now I know there are some people who are going to argue against that. Well, you see now with Ohio State in second place, there really is no easy matches. Feel a little bit for John Trask, who lost so many seniors as he goes through that second cycle. They will be back. The Badgers struggling just a little bit, but John Trask, a phenomenal coach. Of course, the Indiana Hoosiers with a big win over St. Louis as the Hoosiers starting to put it together under Todd Yagley. Well, they've got a, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, they've got a lot of young players like we're seeing out here and we're starting to find some chemistry. Some of the younger players stepping up. A couple of guys who were around for the national championship team uh, a few years ago are helping to lead the way. But everybody looking up at Smiling Bob Warming and Penn State with Connor Maloney's eight goals and Mikey Mignotillo with five goals, the leaders in goals for the Big Ten. That's 13 goals. It's more than both of these teams have scored. Northwestern substitution in the game, number 16, Mike Rubin. Roberts will come in as Joey Calistri will get a well-deserved rest. He has played very well along with Missimo. Riley Kelleher, number six, is also into the game. Two to one, Northwestern. Nine Big Ten teams now with the addition of Maryland and Rutgers. This is the fourth game for both right at the midway point. And it's getting to the point now where even ties won't make either one of these coaches very happy, even on the road, Chris. Unfortunately, they're, they're in that spot in the middle of the pack where you find yourself really needing those points for wins. And Bob Warming and the Penn State Nittany Lions have put themselves in a good spot at this point in the Big Ten schedule. But Sasha Shirovsky said this is a turning point game for us, right? A transformational game. Played into space. The Wildcats are there. Stefan comes way out. He gets low. The goal was open. Weberman, the ever-present Bulldog, slipped at the last minute. He was getting ready to chip one with Stefan way out. And look at Weberman come back. He fouls right there. But well, this is really an outstanding opportunity. The ball dished outside. Weberman on the run. Terrific work by Zach Steffen. You know he's going to come out and make a play. He has to as the goalkeeper. He's come out and he's exited the box. He's got to make a play, either on the ball or the player. Great shot. Yeah, Metzger cranked one from distance. And on this surface, that might be the way to go. But trying to get one by Tyler Miller directly at him is not easy. No, it's not. And I think both teams know that to beat the goalkeeper at the opposite end, they've got to be looking at that one next pass to get to the far post and beat the keeper. 
beating either one of these guys straight up is going to be difficult to do. That'll go out of bounds. Both these coaches have done so much as well for the promotion of college soccer. Sasso Soroski has been a pioneer pushing for more exposure on television back in the day for college soccer. And then of course building that incredible facility in College Park, Tim Lenahan with the same vision right here. And it's gonna even get bigger and better. More big plans coming for soccer here at Northwestern. Lots of money being invested in the changing of some facilities. And there's all sorts of optimism. I understand that there are plans on the Maryland campus as well with regards to changes now that they've joined the Big Ten Conference. So the school's enjoying great success and a lot of attention nationally. Sasho's also put together what he calls the starting 11 where the leaders in the corporate community come forward and get behind the team, allows them to go over to England like they did this past summer go over there and train against some of the top Premier League's youth programs. Good days ahead for college soccer, including the Big Ten with the addition of the team here in Black Maryland and Dan Donegan's Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Played long. And Alex Cronali has come into the game. Rinaldi, the big man from Ohio. Under four minutes. And that'll roll out of bounds. Well, Tyler Miller hasn't been tested much. He's responded certainly to the call, the penalty kick situation. He had to pick a corner. Well, I guess he didn't have to, but he chose a corner. And the penalty kick up the middle gives Maryland that one goal. But for the most part, defensively, Northwestern has done very well under this pressure. In the second half, wind at their backs for the Wildcats. And Sunshine, not directly, but Zach Steffen's going to have to deal with some extra light in his eyes as he looks upfield. Look at Hobson do the work. He won that ball. Now Weberman will look to drop it into space. Cronali feeling the pressure here from the Wildcats. On it now is Forsgren. And it got away from Forsgren. Northwestern's got some fresh legs up top, in particular the three attacking positions, and then Weberman, of course, underneath the attacking forward. And with that, sometimes the guys who've been doing the work for the majority of the half tend to lean towards a longer service, maybe serve a ball into space and let one of those guys with fresh legs run onto it rather than playing defeat. The first 30 minutes here were electric. It slowed down just a little bit. But we'll see now, as Chris Doran said, these new front runners for Northwestern. Yeah, and I think, Dean, the, it, you, can't, you can't abandon the date who took you to the dance. They've scored two goals off of great combination play just because you came in off the bench. Didn't you see how they scored the first two goals? You got to stick with that game plan. So whether it's spaghetti sauce or dates, Chris Doran will break it down for you. Top of the 18, played to Forsgren. Rosenberg. Rosenberg mishit that one, but I certainly like what I've seen from the left back. Played over the top. Look at Miller. He's way out. Feeling just a little bit of pressure from the redshirt freshman Emmanuel Corval from Herndon. Sasso Soroski would love that young man to get some confidence. Dropped to Metzger. Played back to Corval. Couple bounces on the turf. Corval kept alive. And now they'll say no. And with 60 seconds remaining in Northwestern up by one. They will not be in a super hurry right here. Well, Maryland's done well to pull this game back just a little bit against some 
fits and spurts of really good possession for Maryland and build up into the attacking third. A little more movement from the forward side to side would be beneficial. I think in particular as it supports Sowers and uh, Araman. See, Sowers needs a movement. There's the movement that I'm talking about. Sowers dropped just a ball too long for Daniel Johnson, who has now come into the game. A little more movement like that is, is necessary when, when your outside mids are getting the ball in the attacking third. This is Sowers from Ambrose. He's looking outside. Johnson's making the run. More of that is needed in the second half in the buildup for Maryland. And after 45 minutes of play, Northwestern two, Maryland one. Quick thought on the first half. Well, it's, a, it, it's a good game. I mean, three goals in a college soccer game on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. You can't ask for too much more than that, maybe four or five goals. But for the coaches anyway, you got to be happy if you're Maryland's um, Sasha Shirosky and that your team didn't give up. You know, they stuck with it. They fought their way into the attacking third. They created a chance, got the penalty kick converted. For Northwestern, you got to get this game back under control. You can't allow these strings of possession to occur because as it happens in the second half, Maryland gets more confidence. They get one more goal, it's very different. Good stuff. When we come back, we will go in goal with Northwestern's Tyler Miller at halftime here at Lakeside Field. It's Northwestern 2, Maryland 1 on the Big Ten Network. Northwestern leads Maryland by a score of two to one. Tyler Miller has the right jersey on now and we caught up with him before the game. Time now to go in goal with Tyler Miller, the fine goalkeeper for the Northwestern Wildcats with 33 shutouts. He's the all-time shutouts leader. And Tyler, when you came onto campus, your head coach Tim Lanahan said there's two things he hates, freshmen and goalkeepers. And you were both of them as a starting goalkeeper. Yeah, it was it was really unexpected at first to hear that from from him. Um, but I knew if I came in, I worked hard and uh, pr uh, proved myself. Maybe I'd get him to like me. Now you know Tim Lenahan is a huge Philadelphia sports fan. So are you. When will the Flyers win a Stanley Cup? Uh, well, four years ago we got close and unfortunately lost to Chicago. But I'm hoping this year we'll be able to turn it around and maybe get back there. Now, Tyler, besides getting great grades and winning games, I can tell you guys have a lot of fun. What player keeps this team loose? Uh, I'd say Mick Maley, he really brings the energy and uh, he uh, provides a lot of comedy at practice. So, Now there's a lot of talk around Evanston that you can also score some goals. If you were a forward instead of a goalkeeper, how many goals would you score? Uh, I'd say maybe between my uh, back post runs and penalty kicks, maybe I'd have four or five, but it would be pretty tough in this league. So Joey Cleastry is not in danger? No, not at all. Finally, some great moments here at Northwestern. Pick the best moment wearing the purple and white. I'd have to go back to our freshman year when we won the double Big Ten championship at Michigan. Uh, it was just a great, great experience. And for the first time in program history, it was just something to, great to accomplish. All right, good times with Tyler Miller. He's actually let one in here on a penalty kick as we get set to start the second half. Maryland in black from head to toe. Northwestern in all white. Dean Linke, delighted to be with Chris Doran here from Lakeside Field, just on the edge of Lake Michigan with the breeze blowing and Big Ten men's soccer at the midway point. We talked about possession and how important it is for Maryland to establish their rhythm through possession. They're right off the bat now. Stringing a couple of passes together, want to make that a hallmark of their second half performance if they're to get out of here with a positive result. Harrell and Kalistri with the goals in the first half. One back from Carboles, Carboles with the penalty kick for Maryland, and that's where we stand. Those are your three goals. And right there, Cole Missimo had himself a splendid first half, involved in both of the goals for Northwestern. He does a really nice job of getting it forward, really works the flank well, but he pinches inside and he looks for his teammates. Dribbling with your head up, you know, it's just one of those things that you learn at a very young age. And Cole Missimo, when he does it, he's able to scout his targets and drop balls in exactly where they need to be. Sasho Sarosky and his coaching staff, Brian Rowland, Scott Butte, pretty good player there as well. Jack, Jake Pace, who just graduated from Maryland, he was a big target, former wrestler 
on the bench for the Terps. Meanwhile, for Northwestern, Tim Lenahan, Joe Ahern, Jeff Olick, and Ovidio Falcaro on the bench for the Wildcats. They lead it two to one. For Kalistri, Cronali is from Ohio. Looked at Ohio State a little bit. Decided he wanted to go to College Park and join Sasha Swarovski, six foot four center back. Didn't start, but he's in there now. That one will roll out of bounds. Chris, it was fun at halftime taking a look at the Big Ten standings because it really is amazing. Bob Warming, they won the regular season two years ago, won it again last year, and they're on their way to doing something that no other team other than Indiana has done, and that's win three regular season titles in a row. And the regular season titles are important because that's where the hardware comes in the way of rings. The Big Ten tournament champion is the team that advances automatically. Here comes Maryland trying to make the tie as Sowers was right at the top of the six. Sowers is playing very well as one of the seasoned veterans out there. Does a nice job of cutting across, and I, I use the word seasoned relatively loosely. He's got College Cup experience, but this is a kid who's really playing in a very mature fashion from the left back position. Cuts across, into the gap, ball's laid in, and he's got to turn and pull the trigger. Wildcats with the one goal lead. Rosenberg. So Chris, Drew Rosenberg, the sophomore from Short Hills, New Jersey, and we did the Ohio State game where they had five defenders because of Boxel being out, but now Rosenberg has solidified himself at that left back position. He had a handful of appearances last year as a freshman, but he's real good in attack. That's why Tim Lenahan likes him. He loves to get forward, does well with that left foot, and as a true lefty, he offers a, just a different dynamic up there. A couple of times we've seen in that left back position a right footed player. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but when you've got a lefty who could stand over a set piece situation that poses a nice look, a, a, a different look in those restart situations. Me foul. Got a little bit better with every passing second in that first half. The big man from the Netherlands. Pep Band is here on Alumni Weekend. You can hear him in the background. It's a little chilly, but all things considered, pretty nice day to watch some Big Ten men's soccer here at Lakeside. Sights and sounds here on the campus of Northwestern. It's Tyler another... Miller in the alternative kit for the second half. <laughs> He's trying to sell jerseys, is that what happens? <laughs> <laughs> well, you said he came out in the black. He couldn't wear the black, had to wear the red penny. But as they were saying back in the truck, he went to his dorm and picked up his <laughs> jersey. <laughs> and now Northwestern on top, two to one. The Terps, so many banged up players. Subasa Endo, one of the more talented players, a player that could play for the Japanese national team someday. That's his ambition. He's not able to go, not feeling well. And that's a shame because he is a very special player. He is, and he's an important part of what's 
Sasha Shirosky is trying to establish here at Maryland. And, you know, we talked about consistency and strike partnerships and chemistry up top. Those are the kinds of things that when you're interchanging players, you start to lose track of what you're building. Dewey adds him with a pretty good ball. Yeah, but Nico Boxel is up to that. Nico Boxel is such an important part of that defensive back line. And there's Tyler Miller, first half to your left. Second half. I like the second half look better. Yeah, we need to bring in the look he had for the end goal feature as well and have them all up there. What a great year to go in goal with the goalkeepers across the Big Ten, arguably the best conference of goalkeepers. Here's the corner kick. Speaking of goalkeepers, look at the big man, Miller. He is a giant. We saw Andrew Wolverton, the giant, make an unbelievable save against Tyler Arnon last week as Andrew Wolverton, another shutout yesterday as he continues to break through the records. Look at that, Look at this, no problem for Miller. Boy, Ambrose serves a great ball in, in any other game. That could very well be dangerous, but with Tyler Miller in there, his extension off the six foot four frame makes it an easy play. Holloway lost the ball. Better work from Corval. Outside Mifout. Wilson comes in hard. Mifout stays with it. And Hobson will clear it. It'll fall to Metzger. And really, you're just seeing two in the back with Metzger in front as Maryland pushing everybody forward. Well, it's part of their system. When you've got Metzger sitting in front of your two central backs, you've got your flank players pushing forward. And with that diamond in the middle, you're able to work combination play. It, it has not posed any problems for Northwestern as long as the Wildcats remain patient in defense. And we've talked about how Tim Lenahan's squad is notorious for grinding games out. They're very, very good at it. As an opposing team, you start to get impatient, you start to push a little bit, maybe you get stretched and disorganized in transition, you get beaten. Corval. He was starting the early games of the season. Struggled a little bit. He's looked a lot better here in this game, I think Sasha Sarosky would say, say, as they earn another corner kick. Corner kick for the Terps. The question here is, does Ambrose whip this ball in and after seeing what Tyler Miller can do with a ball in the air? Or do they opt for something different, perhaps a short ball? They got some big ones in there, though. Cornali's in now. Mifout is in there. But you're right, Miller can gobble up just about everything, and he did it again, Chris. Grant Wilson showing some pace coming out of the back line. Looking to drop it to Kalistri. Odui adds him, tracks over. Now he's down, banged up. A familiar sight this year for Sasha Sarosky, seeing the Terps rolling around on the surface. And Odui adds him the latest. He's up now, but he's limping just a little bit. That's him from Mitchellville, Maryland. He's a, an important linchpin in the back. He keeps everyone organized, has great speed and recovery. Cleaned a lot of things up against Georgetown. The second effort by Ambrose is Tyler Miller gets his space and owns his space. Look at Hobson playing a role. Hobson trying to keep the defense away from the goal. He's got to stay ball side, goal side defensively. High pressure from Kalistri on Stefan. You can see the wind holding that ball up. That is part of the game here at Lakeside Field. Yes. The Wildcats with that one goal lead will try to take advantage of the wind. Yeah, the wind is picking up, as you can see from the stars and stripes right there. Flag really moving right now. And it's become a little more direct in the sense that it's more south to north. And there's no doubt that the Wildcats are more accustomed under these conditions at this field. You 
lay off a little bit on your through balls. You play more to feet. When you play into space, you take a little bit of pace off that service. Compounding the issues for Maryland, not only are they playing against the wind, but they're also playing into the sun. And that tends to uh, fatigue a player. Here come the Wildcats. They have always been one of the best counter-attacking teams in the Big Ten since the arrival of Tim Lenahan, especially in the past several years as Northwestern has been a fixture in the NCAA tournament. Eight out of the last 10 years, they have made it to the dance. And of course, we all know the stories of Tim Lenahan, the RPI doctor. You can just picture him wearing his white doctor's robe when it comes time to decide which teams go to the NCAA tournament. Here's Metzger. Into the game now, out wide, number 14, Christopher Volander Ianev from Sweden. He started on the wing against Michigan State. And he's in there now. Oh, he's in there as a as a back, and Rayleigh has pushed up in that outside mid slot. It's interesting because Shirovsky was Coach Shirovsky was telling us that he's trying to get more out of Rayleigh as an outside back, but I think Rayleigh is more more comfortable as a mid. More more as an attacking player. Part of these options are being exercised because coach is running out of bodies. Yeah. Healthy bodies. Rayleigh actually played center forward in that Michigan State game. One of the reasons why Volander Ianav was able to get in there. We talk about uh, Tim Lenahan as the mad scientist come RPI time. I've actually talked to other college coaches who, who call him to see if they're in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> now that's classic. Stefan. Now Ambrose. Springs it forward on the left wing. They tuck back in. Sowers has picked up the productivity. Bollander Ianev from Sweden sends across. Miller has it handled as well, Dewey Atsim comes crashing in. And that's a little more of what you s expect to see from that outside back slot in this system of play. Ianev does a terrific job of whipping this ball in. And who knows if the wind has any influence on the way that ball lands. but. Tyler Miller's able to bring it down. A couple more services like that. Maryland may start to find some targets. And the flag is up. Miller holding his hip after contact in that last sequence. Five saves on the day. Yeah, Odui had some bumped him a little bit as he was up in the air and vulnerable for about a half a second. Another one of those Wildcat players that could have a chance at playing the next level. But as Tim Lenahan said, at Maryland, they get a great education, and it's phenomenal. He said, if those guys are going on to MLS and representing the USA in the World Cup, our guys are curing cancer and coming up with the newest formulas here at Northwestern. And that's well said by Tim Lenahan. Some, some bright guys. Maryland, I mean, you think about you know, even this past World Cup, even the guys that didn't make it, five or six players in the pool the entire time. Of course, Graham Zuzzi doing a great job. Come back and do a tremendous job domestically for their Major League Soccer squad. Omar Gonzalez getting some time at center back for Maryland. You mentioned Mullins. He's had some playing time for New England. Didn't play last night. And now that Charlie Davies is healthy for Jay Heaps's New England Revolution. Mullen's not finding too much of the field. But he gets to go to training every day with Jermaine Jones, which can't be such a bad gig. That's fantastic. What a throw in a moment ago by Wilson. Keep in mind, we saw how that flag was blowing, and Wilson got that ball up in the air and threw it about 40 yards. Wilson trying to get back on it. They'll say off of Maryland, throw in for Northwestern. We're under 30 minutes here. And the Wildcats had a 2-0 lead, gave one back on a handball and the subsequent penalty kick. That's where we stand, 2-1. Wilson again, looking for Hobson. Missy Mo is in there. Missy Mo stays with it. Volander Ianev will clear it out. 
Rosenberg to Kalistri. Ooh, right off the noggin there of Forsgren. As they play it up top to Ozumba. He's been nursing a little bit of an injury as Elo Ozumba, freshman from Houston, Texas. Remind you a little bit of Oliver Coupe, who was brilliant for that double for the Northwestern Wildcats when they won the tournament in Ann Arbor. Of course, you remember the performance he put on there. It was tremendous. That was such a great tournament to cover. The upset of Indiana in penalty kicks and then the final game that Sunday afternoon. Okay, Chris Doran, under 30 minutes. You've seen it here. Maryland going against the wind. Obviously, they're a creative team that can keep it on the carpet, but how do they get that equalizer? I think they keep doing what they're doing, and part of the reason why they can keep it on the ground is because the wind is not going to help them if they decide to play more direct, so it sort of dictates that they stick with their game plan. Let's knock it around. Let's see how far we can get, and then let's figure it out with a couple of great runs in the box. Now, I do think the services from the outside are critical parts of of the tactical approach that Maryland brings with their system of play. And so we need to see more services. They've got two big targets inside. Let's find those targets and see a play finished. Great point is they also have to keep it away from the big man Miller. This one's a pretty good ball. Boxo got to it first. It was far enough away from Miller. A point that you've been talking about quite a bit as well, Chris. Sowers will run it down near the corner flag, off of him, goal kick back to Northwestern. Saturday on BTN, the Minnesota Gophers square off against Northwestern as teams in the West Division look to make a statement. That's Saturday at noon Eastern, presented by the United State Marine Corps on BTN and BTN to go. The Wildcats coming off a 2014 win over Wisconsin and the week before, Coach Fitz with a 29-6 pasting of Penn State at Penn State. Felt like college football got turned upside down yesterday with uh, some of the results in the conference and results around the country. Rosenberg. Good defense by Reed. He just stepped into the game. Ambrose will get it wide. 2-1. Maryland trailing, and they keep it on the ground just as my broadcast partner Chris Doran was talking about. Get it all the way to the end line, Northwestern able to handle it. Kalistri. Up to the big man, Ozumba. Big, tall, speedy target player. He was offside a moment ago. Now he's on. Dewey Atsum did well to win it. Boy, lots of changes tactically for Sasso Soroski, as you pointed out. Rayleigh moving up. Also dropping into the midfield. You see Metzger still with Corbos. Suli Danka has gone to the bench with Cronali in there. And Cronali might be necessary, especially now with Ozumba in there, just to match the height. Plus, Cronali will give you that weapon on corner kicks as perhaps somebody that could challenge the height of Miller. See the matchup right there of Cronali and Ozumba. One Wildcats, that long throw in again, Cronali. I love that he not only was able to get his head on it, but able to keep it in play for the Terps. Well, those throws are getting a little bit of aid from the wind. Maryland's going to have to watch that in transition. You tend to mentally shut off momentarily on a ball out of bounds. 
And if Northwestern changes pace and decides to go with the quick throw in, Maryland's got to be sure to have numbers back. Well, Dewey Atsum with Ozumba, putting some pressure on him. Dropped here to Rayleigh. Rayleigh has tucked inside. Outside to the Swede, back across, and then Mefout comes forward. So from Sweden to the Netherlands, Maryland looking for the equalizer. It'll be a corner kick for the Terps, and twice they popped it in. You talk about what needs to happen. This is the service from the outside. Ian F does a great job of making himself available, then doesn't waste any time and whips it in. Chris Doring calling for the ball to be away from the goalkeeper. It is this time, and snapped there by Cronali, but not on frame. And that's what they're going to need to do. Cronali does a very nice job of making himself available and getting up and over. This is how we got to where we are right now. Right off the bat, Northwestern does a terrific job. The ball inside from Cole Missimo. And then a second ball for Missimo. That one goes to Calistri. So Henry, Henry Harrell gets the first goal. Calistri with the second. The handball called against Northwestern. And the finish on the penalty kick gets us to 2-1 to one at the end of the first half of play. Good look there right at the end of that goal package of Tim Lenahan giving a handshake to Joey Calistri, who will go to the bench just for a little bit. He won't be there the entire time with 22 minutes left. Ian e on the right side, marked by Rosenberg. Maryland has looked dangerous here in the last five minutes. Missimo will try to stay with it. He's pulled there and finally stops as Metzger got a little tug. Not a bad foul, though, by Maryland. Ryan Reed has checked in now for Maryland. Missy Mo inside the 18, handled by Stefan, and with the wind blowing right at him, he'll just roll it to the carpet and roll it to Metzger. Metzger, the holding mid. Actually on the Mac Herman watch list to start the season was Metzger. It reminds me of Will Trapp of the Columbus crew, the way he plays that central defense role, and the way he shifts the point of attack when Maryland reloads through him. Reed who dropped it, Reed who'll get it back. Reed has Rayleigh on his right. Probably should have used him. Tried to go through two white jerseys where Rayleigh was wide open. Weberman. When to side, you're starting to feel like Maryland might have a goal in them. I agree with you, Dean. They're starting to get a little confident. Remember, we talked about how rhythm is important to Maryland, and the way they gained that confidence in the rhythm is by possessing the ball. They didn't have a lot of possession in the first half of play. Northwestern was able to make an impact right away. Sasha Sarosky getting ready to go to his bench again here as we're approaching the 20-minute mark left from Lakeside Field, Evanston, Illinois, the campus of Northwestern. Beautiful campus. Ozumba. Cronali doing the job. Yeah, Cronali does well to step up and not let Ozumba turn with that ball. Ozumba's a player, a young attacking player, certainly very gifted in front of goal, but still learning the college game. I love that play from Rosenberg a moment ago. Stepping up, winning it, trying to spring Ozumba and a couple inches away from doing just that. It's great speed. Pressure right away from Nico Boxel. We talked about how Northwestern's defense has got to apply pressure quickly, in particular in the defensive third. Back in game number 16, David Northwestern substitution back in game number 6, Wendy Kelleher. Yeah, watch Rosenberg step up here. Great anticipation by Rosenberg. He's able to step in and maintain possession for the Wildcats. Oh, 
David Kabelik has come in now for the man from the Netherlands, Jerome Miefout. Kelleher comes in and Misimo gets a break. Misimo with a great start to this matchup. Two services from the outside resulting in goals for Northwestern. Stefan quickly on the distribution. One bounce to Rayleigh. Now Metzger, Metzger. Read perfectly by Northwestern is Kelleher off the bench for Lenahan. Tracking back to knock it out of bounds. The Terps with Boxel stepping up. Rosenberg stays with it. Cornali. Our man has impressed me as well. We weren't even sure he was going to start. Sasha didn't say a whole lot about him in the conference calls this week, but because of so many injuries, including Shinsky being out and Subasa Endo being out and so many others. Number 15. Sasha was telling me before the game that Armand has shown well in training. He just hasn't had the opportunity to step onto the field. Thought it would be a great opportunity to get him on today. And of course, necessary for Maryland to go deep on their bench. If Northwestern can hold serve, and we got a lot of soccer left, it'll be their first Big Ten win of the season. It'll push them to five points, tied with Michigan. As Indiana and Michigan State and Maryland come into this game with one win, one loss, one tie. Back across, almost an own goal. Wow. But you don't see too many misjudgments by Northwestern's top defender, Nico Boxel, but in this situation, that ball skips in. Almost burned by the home field advantage. Nico had an eye on that ball as it was coming through, but it skipped. And he was miscalculating. Almost an own goal as there was nothing Miller could do. That might have been the toughest shot he's seen, by the way, in some time. That's a really good point, Dean. That was wicked, and we've talked about how the skip can be dangerous. That ball coming through traffic, and Nico Boxel, is a, he's a top-level defender. There's no doubt about it. He's got a beat on that coming through traffic, but it dropped, perhaps, from the wind. And uh, Nico's calculations were off at that moment. Cronali. Dewey adds him. Let it go. Let's take a look at that last, what turned out to be a shot from Boxel. That ball, when it was headed in, my gosh, awfully close. Boy, that would have been a special own goal. It was amazing how Miller, I mean, his feet were planted in cement. He kind of just waved at it with his right hand. <laughs> 2 1 Northwestern. Cronali. That's not a bad ball. He kept it low enough where the wind couldn't affect it, and now it's bouncing around. It's loose. Roll out of bounds, and they'll say goal kick. Pretty good ball by Cronali, though. Just kept it about 10 feet in the air. So nice service in. Couple of runners as targets. The effort at a clearance. 
if you're going to put it in the air, that is about as high as you can go with it. It got a little bit of swerve from the wind, but it wasn't held up at least, as you see Robert's now coming in for Ozumba. Starting to see some jackets come into play here for the alumni and the faithful of the Northwestern fans. Cooling down a little bit here on the edge of Lake Michigan. You see everybody, you got the caps out. That means it's fall on Big Ten land. Good crowd. This crowd enjoying much better weather than yesterday's home football crowd, the Northwestern Wildcat football team in action against Wisconsin, pick up a big win. But they had to do so in uh, less than enjoyable weather with rain and heavy winds. Sasha Swarovski with a pretty good touch. He's got a daughter now playing college soccer as Marilyn trying to get the answer. Of course, his wife, Shannon Higgins, one of the all-time great collegians, won the World Cup for the USA in 91 over in China. And they have a backyard that I want. Turf with, backyard. With the turf backyard, the soccer field. Shannon Higgins has her jersey retired in Chapel Hill. Too long. Well, there's still a lot of time in this game. I think Northwestern has got to continue to step into the ball, apply some pressure, but they've got to get some possession too. And that's one of the things that's missing from the recipe for success in these last few minutes for Northwestern. You know, you can bend but not break. That's what Tim Lenahan says. We bend a lot, but we don't break defensively. That's all positive. But Maryland right now gaining confidence in possession and finding some of the creases with big time services as well. Against a team like Maryland, you, you've got to be very careful not to do too much bending and give up on possession. Ianev. Right up top. Back across. Boxel seems to always be there when you need him. As it was Cabellic with the service. Granali, a little bit of foot race here now as Roberge comes forward with Stefan out. And almost a big time mistake that the crowd was ready to celebrate. How about the extra effort off the bench from Roberge? Coach Lenahan says he's got great athleticism and pace. That ball served to the midfield. Roberge does a nice job of battling through two 1v1 situations and then keeps the pressure on. I've made the run this far, why not continue? Zach Steffen just doing what a goalkeeper would do, just get a foot on it and get it out. But Roberge closed him down quickly. Miefeldt's back in there. He'll square it. Boxel miss hit it. On the turn for the Terps, bouncing away. It'll be a goal kick for Northwestern. Nice service in. Mifout does well to keep that ball close to him. On the first touch, second touch is a serve across. This is what I mean by Northwestern keeping the ball a little bit more. Maryland continuing to build in the attacking half of the field. Metzger. Ianev was waiting, and Roberts doing exactly what Chris Doran said he was meant to do when he comes off the bench for Tim Lenahan. In the 18 again, Wilson. Throw in quickly for Maryland. The urgency, of course, is there. Down a goal with a little over 10 minutes left here in this one. And again, that's the pressure from Roberts. Did go off of Roberts, but. Come the Wildcats. Look at Hobson hold it up. Drops it to Weberman. Weberman has Rosenberg. 
Here's Forsgren, we'll get it to Rosenberg. Rosenberg back across. Chris, he had time to push it down to the inline before he made that cross. I don't think it's necessary that Northwestern feels so rushed getting out. They've got the one goal lead, they're at home, they've got conditions working in their favor and there's only 10 minutes left. Why not hold that ball up and allow your midfield to come up and offer support underneath? Bowles, the goal scorer, getting this attack started. Look at Nico Boxel. Try to get through him and all that muscle that he's added to his frame. Good luck with that. A goal kick Northwestern as the Wildcats bringing their veterans back on. Medina and Calistri. And Calistri at midfield encouraging his team here to push through in the final nine. Well, Brandon Medina is going to bring the possession. He's still working back after ACL work last year. He maybe doesn't have all of his power, but he's certainly got the ball handling skills. And in that central midfielder's role, he can hold and distribute, hold and distribute, and maybe help the two central defenders to work their way back up, or their, the two holding mids to work back up into the midfield in transition. Managing these last eight minutes are gonna be critical for Northwestern. Stefan able to crunch that one as the wind actually died down for a few moments and he hammered that 60 plus. Second ball was won by Maryland. They'll need to do that here. Rayleigh started at the outside back. He's now in the middle, sitting in front of Metzger, trying to direct some traffic. Maryland desperate for the equalizer here. Cronali again keeps it pretty low. Medina to Kalistri. Here's more of the patience that Chris Dorn was just talking about, at least it was for a moment. Yeah, not enough. You can knock that ball and recycle it through the back. Dewey Adson. Not on the same page with Mifout. Well, getting on the same page has been the, the theme for Maryland this year. They just haven't had a consistent tandem up top. And that understanding is lacking in the final third. When it comes to finishing plays, you've got to have guys who are on that same page. Medina won that back. Shot near post. Not on frame there for Sam Forsgren, the freshman from the St. Paul Academy in Minnesota. Oh, I like the effort. Sam Forsgren's in there to make a difference in the final third. Medina does really well to keep that ball under control and drop it in between the defenders. You mentioned keeping us on the same page. I want to thank the SIDs from Northwestern, Paul Kennedy, Maryland's Jody Fick for all the great information on the teams as well. Maryland, a wonderful addition here to the Big Ten especially to Big Ten men's soccer as Maryland has been the dynasty in men's college soccer since the arrival of Sasha Swarovski. Think about that, eight college cups in 24 years. So you know once every two or three years you're gonna get to the big dance. That's not a bad record to be looking at when you're considering which college soccer program you wanna go to. Rayleigh. Back across, driven well. Holloway, not able to clear it. And trying to just poke one over there was Kabelik. Thing is, Chris, it's gonna be tough to get one over Miller even if you're poking it because the wingspan on the man, as you see the fans here in Maryland, the crew in attendance here, it's tough to get it by him. It is, and that's why combination play in the final third is important when you're playing against a, a guy like Tyler Miller. Service to the back post. That sort of thing is important when you try to beat a big goalkeeper like that. And now with five minutes left, you get the feeling that Sasha Swarovski is checking to see if the bus driver can score a goal as he empties his bench. A ton of attacking players in there. Only Cronali and Adui Atsim sitting in the back. 
there is Cronali. Oh, I like that play. Get it back to Stefan. See if he can get it past midfield by driving it low. And he does. Mifa wins it. No whistle. Kept alive. It's in. And cleared out the last minute by Dirth. Back again for Maryland. Trying to tie it. Mifa's there. Straight in. And it's tied. 2-2. Two -two. You knew it was coming. Well, Dean, you called it. This game was screaming for another goal. Maryland maintains the possession. They do so with a couple of head balls through the midfield. Mefout is drifting. It's really, it's a great breakup by Dirth, but Mefout comes back on the second service and beats Tyler Miller. Service in, one touch to bring it down. An awkward touch off the outside of his boot, but it's enough. His second goal of the year. Mifout has had himself a great game, and it's paid off here with the goal in the final five minutes. Give the Terps all kinds of credit. And let me just tell you, it's the, we talked about the details to start the show as part of the State Farm State of Success. Cronali heading that ball back to Stefan rather than going the other way, allowed Stefan to get it past midfield. That's a really good point. It was very astute, and Cronali, of course, confident in his ability to get the ball back to Stefan. Wilson looking for the Bulldog Hobson. Holloway. Rosenberg. And that one snapped by Boxo. And of course, we've seen Boxo play up top last year at the Big Ten tournament. He played center forward for Tim Lenahan. Great ball in by Rosenberg. Boxel had already made the run up as the ball was recycling through the back line. And he serves as a great target. Not because he's the biggest player, but because he's one of the smartest players when it comes to seeking space. Kalistri. Dewey adds him back to Stefan, and now look at Maryland. They are going to go ahead and try to win this one in regulation. Kalistri. Kalistri is fouled, and now finally Northwestern showing that urgency. Perhaps they took their foot off the pedal a little bit, and Maryland able to pounce. And as you look at the goal scores, Harrell got it started early in the third minute to make it one nothing, and then Joey Kalistri, the player that Chris Doran talked about in the open, made it two nothing. An unfortunate handball led to the penalty kick, and Corbols pulled it back two to one, and we've just kind of been rolling along, and then all of a sudden, the big man from the Netherlands, Mifau, with under five minutes to go, has tied it. I think in, in part, what happened is that Northwestern, without this sense of urgency, allowed Maryland to hang around, and Maryland's not the kind of team that's gonna go away easy. They were able to gain confidence with their possession, find their way to the final third, and start connecting with targets. Boxo with a little push and a shove to win it back. Kalistri, well, Dewey had some head at red. Forsgren, he'll square it. Hobson has some time, has some space. Looking for a white jersey, wanted to go right side. Medina. We'll try to win it back. There was some white jerseys open on the white side as making that run. Along the right side, Wilson was over there. So was Kelleher. Rosenberg hoping to find Kalistri. Hollander, Ianev. I'll tell you what, for two teams who have been struggling to score goals and don't have guys who are in breakout seasons with regards to goal production, this has been a very entertaining game when it comes to goal scoring. Indeed, Maryland comes in, they've scored eight and given up eight, and so now it'll be 10-10 even. 
Northwestern coming in. They had scored nine, given up four, so now it's 11 and six. Medina, too strong to Forsgren as might bring you more soccer here on the Big Ten Network. Maryland knocking on the door. They get the equalizer with under five minutes to go. And pretty sure we got overtime soccer here, Chris Doran. It'll be interesting to see what happens when they play too many halves. And Maryland has to defend the end with wind at their backs. They've played better with the wind at their face. And after 90 minutes of play, it's Northwestern to Maryland to the Terps willing the equalizer. And great work by Maryland to stay in the match and continue to fight through with the confidence in possession, able to find a couple of those big targets up top, and the targets didn't let them down. And one of the big targets, Jerome Meefout from the Netherlands, staying with it. Elbow to get it by Tyler Miller, and that's where we are. Overtime soccer around the corner. Like a goal was coming from Maryland. They were able to manage the wind. And well, I really thought Northwestern gave up on possession, and, and while they're not a huge possession team, they've got to protect the ball. You've got to manage the game with a 2-1 lead and 10 minutes to go. All right, here we go. The Seagulls joining in on the fun here now, right along Lake Michigan as they are flying over Lakeside Field. Overtime soccer, Maryland. And they pick right up where they left off here in the final minutes of the second half. Metzger will drop it out to Sowers. Big bounce, they'll go out of bounds back to Northwestern. Miller, Missimo, I like seeing him in there with Kalistri. Missimo plays it to Kalistri. Dewey Atsum on the mark. Kalistri stays with it. Kalistri back across, and the game is over. The Wildcats win it. I'm not sure that Maryland knows that the game's over. Zach Steffen is making his point to the referees. And Sasha Swarovski is pretty fired up as well. I think the, their point is that ball was over the goal line and should not have been allowed to be played. But you play until the whistle. And there was no whistle, and Joey Calistri continued. You're definitely seeing the emotion on the head coach, Sasho Sarovsky. It's Abby Okalaja, the fourth official, who's holding him back. Boy, Brandon Medina does a really nice job of finding Misimo. Misimo continues his run now. Joey Calistri goes to the goal line. Is that ball across or not? Tough angle to tell. Calistri continues. Misimo sitting there. He doesn't even have to beat Zach Steffens. Zach Steffens come out of the come out of the goal mouth. Here again from a different angle. Terrific turn by Medina. Misimo will continue his run. Kalistri goes to the goal line. In pursuit. The question is, does the whole ball cross the line? That's when it's out of play. And the shirt comes off to celebrate the fourth goal of the 2014 campaign on alumni weekend. Does the ball cross the end line? I'm not sure. The only other question that could come up is whether or not the assistant referee was in the position to make the call on the opposite side of the field. And I think Sasho Shirovsky is saying that the assistant referee should have been the one to raise the flag or should have been in position to make that call. Here's from our crew again. The whole ball's got to go over the line, and 
really at this angle, it's tough. That's that's too close to call. You can't you can't call it. But that's great work by our crew here at the Big Ten Network. Part of the sphere of that ball could still be hanging over the line, which allows for it to be ruled still in play. Certainly, after he gets the touch, the ball's clearly in play. But at that moment, is the entire sphere of the ball over the line? Wow. Incredible. The combination of Calistri and Missimo, phenomenal here today, much to the chagrin of Sasha Swarovski. Well, he, he could not have had an angle that would be any better than what we've seen from the bench where he's sitting 70 yards away. But it's up to him to make the point for his team and no doubt his players have come to him and said that ball's over the line it shouldn't have been allowed Zach Steffen the goalkeeper steps out for Maryland and he goes to the officiating crew right away and says there's no way that that's allowed Northwestern now 1-1-2 one, one, in Big Ten play Maryland now 1-2-1 one, one. for 